Well, hello there everyone. It is Monday, November the 1st. And just FYI, this is probably going to be the first video out of two shorter videos today. I'll try to keep it short. Let's see, on the first one, okay, I'm going to talk about some stuff. First of all, if you want to, if you want to be an investor, especially in real estate, some big time names will say you should rent, 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 rent for your own home until you're wealthy. And I'll give you examples of why. In my first house in Virginia, we bought it. It needed a ton of work. It wasn't like a uh, fixer upper, it was just an old house. Original windows, original furnace, no air conditioning, old windows, drafty, 100% carpet in the floor and bathroom kitchen and everything, covering hardwood floors. A uh, house was built in 1955, so it needed a ton of work. We did not have money to fix it up, but over the years, we've put a lot of money into it, okay? And various times the contractors, things would happen. So, and there'd be like accidents, which there would be accidents. And different times I would hear things like, oh, one, this happens one time in a thousand, you know, and it would happen to me. Um, other times, one time in 200, it would happen to me. Um, and then and I'll give you an example of today. I bought the house I'm in in Florida and it's approximately 20 years old. It was a vacation home for a wealthy person who lived up in the Chicago. And I was told he would come here, him or his, or his spouse, would come here once a year, usually for a total, maybe to come more than once, but it was a total of four to six weeks during the year. So everything in the house is original, but it's 20 years old. Meaning the microwave, the microwave has a stamp in there. It looks brand new, but it looks a little different than a brand new one. But the, stamp, the sticker in there is from 2002. Uh, the refrigerator from 2002, I think. Oh, the refrigerator might have been replaced. Wash machine is 2007, um, but the pool is 20 years old. The pool equipment is 20 years old. The roof is 20 years old. Everything's 20 years old. Paint, I think it's the original paint job. Everything's 20 years old. One thing with a 20 year old house, to my eyes, after buying a house built in 1955, a 20 year old house is like a brand new house. But as I'm finding out, after 20 years, things start breaking. Little things, I knew things would break. And I have replaced, since I've been here, two toilets, three faucets, a couple drains in bathtubs. I'm going to replace stuff in the, the kitchen faucet and lines. I replaced, for the pool, I don't know how many of you have in-ground pools, but I have like a tall, I call it a missile filter. It's like a, it's a cartridge filter. It's two and a half, three feet tall. I had to buy the whole new housing and the filter is like with labor, eh, 700 bucks. Okay. Um, and other stuff. And then, but anyway, today, well, I've gotten, I've gotten estimates on getting my boat lift, not my boat lift, I already got a boat lift, getting a service, getting a dock build, a tiki hut, all that kind of stuff. I've talked about that in videos. And I've gotten estimates on getting a privacy fence. Um, but I got multiple estimates on the dock, like four. I got multiple estimates on the fence. And I'm finding out a couple things. One, and also we had a roof leak. And I have a concrete tile roof. It's nice looking. It's a, a tile roof. And um, one thing I found out is contractors are extremely busy right now. You have supply and demand issues. So material prices have gone up. But you also have a variety of contractors out there. I have experienced it with the dock, the fence, and the roofing. That you can leave message after message and they will not call you back. Okay. That's happened to me here in Florida. It's happened to me in Virginia. Um... I've been trying to get a contractor in Virginia to do a lot of work in my house up there that was sold. The agreement was she's paid in full, but there was a little bit of touch up left to do in the kitchen prior, because when we sold the house, it needed a new kitchen counter and supply issues, it was delayed coming in. It has now been installed, touch up issues need to be done. I started texting and calling late last week. As of yet, I haven't heard anything back. And the, the mistake is she's paid in full. So hopefully she will get back and do the work here. Um, all the contractors I've gotten, I've signed paperwork for the dock and the Tiki Hut. I'm signing paperwork tomorrow for the fence. And I got guys working. There. That's why I'm later today recording a video. Guys are working today on my roof, concrete roof. Concrete tile roof. It's not, it looks nice. I said it before. Um, but when they're up there, <laughs> they, they're working on both the front and the back, a couple little spots. Um, they, well, I'm going to tell you, back up just a bit. I always back up, don't I? I'm back up just a bit. When I was getting my estimates, the very first roof guy that came in, when he walked up, he was looking at my roof. He was looking. And, he, and I was like, the problem's over here. And he goes, I know. I'm just looking around. See, And I was like, I was like, he's looking. And I was like, what are you looking at? 
He goes, I'm seeing how many tiles you have popped up. And he goes, let's walk around the house. I said, but the problem's out here. He goes, I know, let's walk around the house. So we walk around the house. He points out an area in the back up top. He said, they're starting to pop up. Some areas in the front starting to pop up. And he said, when they start popping up, your tiles are obsolete. We can't fix it. We have to put a new roof on it. And I was like, really? What's a new roof cost? And he goes, about $50,000. I said, huh, okay. All righty. He goes, I'll, I'll get back in touch with you the firmer price. Okay. And meanwhile, I got other companies come and they're like, we can repair it. And I got different estimates, different kinds of warranties, different, um, just different things. So I got workers here today, a company I found that in my humble opinion is the best fit for me, best fit for their warranty, the quality of work, et cetera, et cetera. And, but one guy, is, it's two man crew doing the work up there now. And they're up tippy top up there. And I was inside getting ready to go to the pool store to get my weekly water test on my little vial of water that I take to them. And while I was getting ready to walk through the house, I heard someone sliding down the roof. And I was like, that's not good because what just slid down the roof? So I walked out back and I was like, I wonder what it is. And I started looking around and I have a pool cage that you've probably seen in a video. It's, it's a screened in pool. And one of the pool sections, the screen section was torn open, not big, but it was a hole. And I was like, what in the world fell through there? And I look on the pool deck, there's nothing. I look in the pool and there's a, what appears to be a crowbar laying down in the pool. So then we started looking, I got my, the missus out there and we started looking and like, oh, it hit the step. And there's tile on the edge of the step and it chipped a little chunk out of the blue tile. And I'm like, well, that's not good. So I talked to the guys, they were apologetic. And they told me, in all the years they've done houses, that's the second time something has fallen through, through a pool cage roof on them. And the guy was like, it's your lucky day. He goes, I may go leave here and buy a lottery ticket because things like this don't happen very often. It's your lucky day. I was like, really? I mean, in the big scheme of things, it's an, e it's an easy fix. Um, I talked to the company. They told me they will take care of it. They're gonna call me back tomorrow with the, the game plan. Fixing the screen. I had some screens replaced earlier. It's like, I got it for $105 per screen. And they told me right when I was doing it that their price had gone up um, because materials had gone up and it was going up to 125 per screen. So I'll assume it's $125, could be wrong. But the pool chip, two choices, resurface the pool or epoxy it. Because when I went to the pool store, I told them about it and they said, well, there's two ways you can fix it. You can resurface the pool, the inside of the pool. That would be like a brand new pool service sur surface. And I was like, wow, that's probably expensive. And they said they don't do it, but another pool store, they told me who does it. And they said, or you could epoxy if it's on the step. And I said, the pool's 20 years old. I don't think I'm gonna go after the company to resurface the entire pool. That's like, they chipped out a piece from the step, not the whole pool, that, you know. So they said you could epoxy it. They have, I didn't, I'm new with the pool, being a pool owner. They got epoxy that will cure underwater. And so I can put it in there, I can smooth it out, form it properly and fill the crack in and um, it'll cure underwater. The bad thing is, is, is it'll be white where the step tile was blue, but it's a 20 year old pool. So anyway, I was curious. I called to get a rough estimate on resurfacing a pool. And the guy asked me the size and he said, it give me a broad range. Um, seven to eight thousand dollars up to fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars. Hmm, interesting. And I asked in the pool store, look, the one I go to and asked on the phone, how often do pools need to be resurfaced? And both places told me on average 15 to 20 years, because what happens is the surface will get rough and you'll start getting cuts on your feet. And I was like, huh. The missus and I, we do like aerobics in there and we are getting little cuts on our feet in places. So the easy fix that I'm gonna do is get some water shoes. <laughs> so like water aerobic shoes, you can get them. I, ch I checked locally and I couldn't find them. I'll order them off the internet probably. And that'll solve that problem, at least for now. Because, but there's a point to all this. The roof has cost me five grand. I'm fixing var various things. I'm doing some maintenance work and I'm also gonna have the entire roof clean because it's all tile roofs that I see in Florida. They get dirty, they get mold on them, black mold, black mildew. We're gonna get it clean properly. It'll look almost like a brand new roof, hopefully. Um, so it's five grand. The fence I'm getting is gonna cost me six grand. 
the deck work, the dock, the Tiki Hut, I got, remember, four estimates. Three estimates came through. One company must be blowing me off. They won't. They've been out to my house, but they haven't contacted me. They won't answer my phone calls. They won't return my calls. So anyway, the three estimates I got, I picked what I thought was the best company to go with. And that's going to cost me like $18,000 or so. I'm not counting the electrician that I'll have to hire separately to hook up lights and a ceiling fan. So anyway, the point of all this is, is two points. One, as a homeowner, you will always have expenses. Always. There's always something that breaks. No matter if you have brand new construction, a 50-year-old house, a 20-year-old house, there is always something that will break. Number two, you will always have issues with contractors. Things will accidentally get broken. Good contractors, contractors will stand behind it. Bad ones won't. Okay, so find, try to find the good contractors. Uh, number three is if you're an investor like I am, I'm not wealthy. I've said this many times. But in the old days, I told him, I remind my wife earlier today, 12 years ago, we needed a shed roof on one of our sheds. And I got an estimate, it was $800. And I was like, oh, it was painful because it's like, my house needed stuff. It needed windows. It needed doors. It needed different things. And I was like, it needed a new furnace. It needed air conditioning. We were heating with electric oil-filled radiator type heaters. Been doing that for a decade. But I was like, $800 would buy something for the house. But if I didn't fix that shed roof, it keeps leaking. The shed's going to be destroyed. So that's how tight money was. It was painful. But we got the shed roof. The following year... We got some more money and we started doing some other stuff. But nowadays it's different because as an investor, as a real estate investor, you start tra having transactions of larger figures of money. Rent checks come in, um, repair bills go out. You might get five rental houses and one needs a roof. If you have one rental house and it needs a roof, it hurts. If you get five rental houses, all of a sudden you find hmm, it doesn't hurt as much. When you get 25 rental houses like I have, then it's like, you get a little cushion there. So it gets a little better. So anyway, the point of all this is become an investor. And I'm sorry about the glare and everything coming through the window. It's that time of day. It's getting late in the day. All right. Sorry this video went on for so long. I am going to stop it. Get a sip, drink of water, and talk on 401ks. Take care. Mansky is signing out.